I'll fight for the Players' Championship. There's a real healthy legacy scene in Minneapolis, so not too surprising to see these guys off to a pretty good start here this week. Was weekend. not aware. Yeah. A Bayou and a Deathright Shaman, while Baugh will sacrifice a wooded foothill. So get a land out of his deck, play a Green Sun Zenith, which will be for a Dryad Arbor, ideally. Oh, look at that forest. It's a pretty one. There's the Dryad Arbor. We'll shuffle that in. And then we'll be good to go here in just a moment as we head back Tickle's way. <laughs> Quick shuffle there of Baugh's deck, and then Tickle will move forward with his Charlotte Salti deck, a deck that we know is pretty popular in the room here this weekend. Rudy Briska, Chris Van Meter, a couple other players playing it this weekend. Maelstrom Pulse the draw. And now with a, a I, I guess there is not a whole lot that Tickle can flip over the deck off of a Charlotte's agent here that allows him to kill the Dryad Arbor. He can still hit discard spells and cantrips. Essential visions too. Yep. Brainstorm will work just fine. This will allow Tickle to draw three and put two back. A couple more copies of Abrupt Decay, which is both good and bad. He's got quite a few of those. Brainstorm done resolving very quickly, and now we head back Bosway. So he'll untap with two lands. Take a draw step here, Will Jacob. Crater of Behemoth is what he picked up. Though notably no blue cards in Tickle's hand to pair with the Force of Will. So something like Glimpse of Nature here could be very, very good against Tickle's hand. No Glimpse of Nature just yet for Ball, it appears. He does have two copies of Elvish Visionary in hand, however. Might look at a hand like Tickles and say, well, he's got a Tarmac Wife that's bigger than anything in Baugh's deck, and he's got a bunch of removal spells to work with. Uh, elves can play a slow game, and you can set up things like Wirewood, Symbiote plus Elvish Visionary, uh, or just kind of dump random stuff on the table and get to Crater Hook Behemoth. Queer and Ranger comes down. Baugh going to use that. Untap the Dryad Arbor, pick up the forest, replay the forest. We'll see what else he wants to play this turn. He does have a green mana floating. That'll allow him to play the Elvish Visionary, so that'll draw a card. Picked up a copy of Glimpse. And I think you might see a development turn this turn into Fireworks next turn, and if Tickle does not draw a blue card or some way to get the Glimpse out of hand, uh, all these removal spells are not worth a whole lot. Might see a Heritage Shrewd here in just a moment. Yep. So easy for this deck to go off. Or just have a big... I mean, this is turn two. It's so easy. I'll pass the turn back. So setting up for the big turn next turn. Tickle. We'll play a fluted delta very quickly. Charlotte's agent going to come into the red zone. That'll do just fine. Let's see what's next here for Matthew. Does have two copies of Abrupt Decay in hand. He also has a fetch on the battlefield with Deathrite Shaman, so he has the ability to cast both of those this turn if he'd like to. We'll start with a Tarmogoyf. I'll just pass the turn back. Ball with a Nettle Sentinel. See, Tarmogoyf is a 1 2 here. Just a brainstorm in the graveyard. With Glips, Nettle, Sentinel, Elvis Visionary, Natural Order. Feels like the tools are here for Baw to go off this turn. Yep. Which way does he want to go? That's a good question. He'll start with a Glimpse. And you have to feel if this resolves, Jacob's got to imagine I've got the green light for everything this turn. And, uh, you know, it's almost impossible for Tickle to stop anything now with that Abrupt Decay in hand because if he goes after Heritage Druid, well, Baugh simply floats three mana and can go about his business. Mm -hmm. Jacob's still waiting to see if this is going to resolve. Tickle just probably thinking if there's anything to be done with the removal spell in his hand. I mean, you can't take it with you, so you might as well kill something. Yeah. Well, there's an abrupt decay. 
And the upshot here is that th this play has uh, the possibility of of bottlenecking Baugh's mana down the line. If he happens just to not find another copy of Harry's Druid, he may draw a couple cards this turn and puts himself into play, but not fully be able to go off. Glimpse is going to resolve here. Three mana is going to be added from Heritage Druid. Now there's just one green floating. I have to draw two cards here, does Ball. Keep in mind, Ball hasn't played a land yet this turn either. Yeah, he wants to wait as long as possible. So if he draws Guy's Cradle, then he can really make something happen. There's Nettle Sentinel. Draw a card. Is there more for Ball to do on this turn? Well, looks like he has drawn the Cradle. Don't know if there's anything for him to do with it, really. Cradle will be tapping for five mana this turn. Looks like his hand is pretty land heavy, however. There's a cradle. Might just be natural order time. Yeah. Let's see what creature he wants to sacrifice. Sacrifice a visionary. The Dryad Arbor is eligible to attack. Hasn't used Quarren Ranger yet this turn. Might be able to attack for lethal here. Kerhoven's going to be plus five if he were to go get it. He's short on lethal on the board. It looks like he's going for Wirewood. So he wants to keep his Glimpse turn going. So he's got one green mana floating at this time, I believe. For what it's worth, he only plays one Crater of Behemoth. Ah, that's mm -hmm. the difference. Yep. Gotcha. Most lists that I see have seen over the last year or so have played two copies. That's the issue at hand here. Why he's not searching up another crater hoof, potentially, is because he's got his one in his hand. Queen Ranger's going to go active. Going to return a forest, untap the Dryad Arbor. See how much further Ball can go here. Now he'll use the Dryad Arbor for some mana, pick up Elvish Visionary, untap the Dryad Arbor with Wire with Symbiote. He'll redeploy the Visionary, draw two cards, of course, because there's a glimpse that's been played. Found another Queer and Ranger. So now he'll use that. Play this. So should have no mana floating in the pool now. Ba has drawn a lot of lands. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, this is still fine next turn. You can hardcast Crater Earth next turn. Yeah. yeah. A wasteland to draw there for Tickle. That's actually a pretty big one. Yep. For as many lands as Baugh has drawn here, I don't think he's drawn another copy of Gaia's Cradle. Looks like Tickle's going to start with Abrupt Decay. Going to go after Wirewood Symbiote. Yeah, it's going to go down. It's a great one to start with if you're going to kill any of the creatures from Elves. Interesting. I think in, instead of Wasteland, I think Tickle may be contemplating just Maelstrom Pulse on the Quarian Rangers. Okay. That does a lot to stunt Baugh's mana as well. Yep. Here come some attackers. The Tarmogoy is a lot bigger now. Looks like it's a four or five. Might be even bigger than that. You see him checking. Sorcery creature. Sorcery creature instant, no lands. 
wasteland after combat. So he misses out on a point of damage that way. No, just pass the turn back. And I think my preference would have been for Maelstrom Pulse, just because Ba didn't play a creature there, even though he had a mana last turn. So you know he doesn't have a creature in his hand. But you have no information about whether or not there's another Gaia's Cradle in his hand. And if Ba does have another Gaia's, Gaia's Cradle, that play is basically for naught. It yeah. does not do a whole lot. And the Maelstrom Pulse does some work to take the wind out of the sails of the Cradle anyway. He's just down two creatures. Metal Sentinel, rumbling on in. Not the most impressive of turns here for Jacob. He'll deploy another Nettle Sentinel and tap the first. And I think that'll be his entire turn. As you mentioned, he looks like he's got like five lands and then a Crater of Behemoth in hand. Tickle going to activate Death Ray Shaman. Abrupt decay of the draw. Tickle is really looking for a blue card to pair with Force of Will. Yeah. Maelstrom Falls is going to take care of Nettle Sentinels. At that point, his position is great. He's still at risk of getting killed by uh, the right top deck. Dry Driver is going to block one of the creatures. Looks like the Tarmogoyf. And Queer and Ranger allow him to pick it up. Pass the turn back. Will Tickle. Over to Baugh. Cradle the draw. a little late to the party. Yeah, it would have been really good on some of these previous turns, but it just allowed Ball to power out the Critical Behemoth in his hand. All Ball can do is pass the turn back now. Tickle just looking for a blue card, as you mentioned. He just found a Verdant Catacombs, which does help a little bit here. Need some more fuel for the Death Rite Shaman. There's Elvish Visionary. It's going to jump in front of Tarmogoyf. Tickle, considering passing the turn back, and he will. Ball will draw. Maven Zenith. Didn't get a great look. There's one swept teeth. Oh, that's actually a copy of Reclamation Sage. Which I guess is not a total disaster here, because there is a Charlotte's Agent in play, but hard to imagine Ball can use his whole turn that way. Yeah. Oh. Seen better draws, that's for sure. Draw it over, we're going to untap. There's Rex Sage. It's going to go after that Charlotte's agent, as you mentioned. Probably on jump blocking duty on the Tarmogoyf, too. Mm -hmm. Ball trying to hold on here. He's not in great shape. He was, you know, day late and a dollar short a number of different ways his, on his glimpse turn. Even if he just had a second Crater Hoof behemoth in his deck, he could have Crater Hoof attack for a bunch and maybe finish off the game via combat damage, but very challenging now. There's your block. I don't know. It looks like a tickle going here for a hard cast force will on the reclamation stage. Oh, wow. Well, he gets a bunch of chump blocks for his trouble this turn. I guess that's At true. At least one. Yeah. Hard to imagine Ball can do very much without mana, and every time you force a chump block and keep a creature off the table, it means Cradle's impact is diminished. And uh, now he's even got Wasteland, Wasteland, yeah. uh, Wasteland Abrupt Decay. I mean, he's going to just nuke almost all of Ball's permanents. Yeah. Uh, wrap up the game next turn. There's no coming back from that.
There's the wasteland. I like just aggressively using abrupt decay. Maybe I'm incorrect about that, but. I don't think it matters a whole lot as Ball has to chump block the Tarmogoyf and does not have to block the uh, Charlotte's Agent no matter how it breaks. So I don't think there's any thing to be gained by using the abrupt decay before damage. Okay. Or, before blocks. I think Baw's blocks are basically face up, and killing one of the creatures before combat doesn't really matter. But two Quirin Rangers can pick up the Dryad Arbor. Here's Abrupt Decay to kill this. And now you have nothing left in its lethal attack. So Baw does get to search up a land with the Windswept Teeth. That's why it falls down to five. There's another Dryad Arbor there, but Baw's resources have just been whittled away. His, his glimpse just didn't break his way. Yep. Just kind of left him with some stuff in play. Yeah. And no he drew, mana, he drew no, a lot of lands. No way to rebuild. Yeah. He drew a lot of lands. Tarmogoyf's going to get chump blocked. Ball's going to fall down to three from Charlotte's agent. Tickle will pass the turn back. He'll draw, and that's going to do it. So Matthew Tickle's going to win again number one here over Jacob Baugh. Charlotte Saltai up a game here over Elves, which means we're going to turn our attention to the sideboard here, and we will start with Jacob Baugh. He's got a Sylvan Library, a Scavenging Goose, a Natural Order, Progenitus, four Cabal Therapies, three Abrupt Decays, a Gaddock Teague, a Surgical Extraction, and two copies of Thoughtseize. So you can bring in the uh, Sylvan Library and the Scavenging Goose pretty easily in this kind of matchup, and some of the discard spells as well. The question is, is he going to want to go to Progenitus? Progenitus is powerful in matchups where you think it's that your Natural Order is likely to resolve, but you may lack the critical mass to be able to kill with a Crater Hoof shot. Uh, I think in a matchup where, you're, where your opponent could easily have Liliana the Veil, uh, Toxic Deluge even, I don't think Progenitus is great, but I know that a lot of Elf players like to bring it up, right to bring the card in in slow matchups just in general. On the other side of things, you got a Life from the Loma Thought Seas of Vendillion, Click, and Notion Thief. Force of Will, Wasteland, Grafdigger's Cage, Nile Spellbomb, a Disfigure, a Pithy Needle, a Golgari Charm, a Scrubland, a Null Rod, and two copies of Meddling Mage. So the Pithy Needle here seems very good. A lot of activated powers in the Elf deck. Uh, additional removal and things like Disfigure and Golgari Charm are very good. Uh, Grafdigger's Cage is a nice answer to a lot of the stuff going on in the Elf deck. And I think you want your extra copy of Force of Will and Vendillion Click. Well, those are the options there for both players. Jacob Ball will be on the play here for game number two. In the meantime, we're talking about our Season 3 Invitational Champion. It's Alex Bastecki. Of course, he did defeat Steve Mann in the finals of our Season 3 Invitational in New Jersey. An epic affair, and that's why he's got this fantastic germ token for your batter skulls and bone hordes and flare husks. There's a couple of ways to go about getting it. Yep. Anyone who attends any of our two-day $20,000 open series events, like the one we're having right now in St. Louis, gets a copy of this token, as well as anyone who signs up for any of our 5K Premier IQs, both the ones that we run Sundays here at the open series events and ones that you can bring to your local store. And if you can't make it out to any of our events, any order from StarCityGames.com, $5 or more, will come with a copy of this token. Congratulations to our Season 3 Invitational Champion, Alex Bustecki, who look forward to seeing him at the Players' Championship. Yes. That was a very impressive victory by him. So we'll see if he can capitalize on that and see what kind of run he can make at the Players' Championship, which is going to be a heck of a tournament to watch. And more, and more new blood in our Players' Championship. Yeah. We got some new faces. Jacob Wilson, too. Yep. Some old faces like Jim Davis and Kevin Jones and some, some new faces as well. So I'm looking forward to everybody who's coming out for that tournament. We've got so many more slots that we have to punch to the tournament in Roanoke at the end of the year. That's what season four really is for. Elves, Charlotte Sultai, very popular decks here this weekend. Not much of a surprise. Elves continues to be a very dominant deck and also just very popular in the Midwest. You know, I think of that open series in Indianapolis that we had last year where there were four Elves decks in the top four. We see Chris Anderson play the deck quite a bit, even though he is on lands this weekend. Uh, Riley Coran plays the deck quite a bit. We see quite a bit of Elves. And now we're seeing a huge uptick in Charlotte Sultai. It appears since the banning of Dig Through Time. Yeah, it certainly has helped a lot. You know, we're still early on, so it's hard to make too bold of predictions. But given where the metagame was at 
free Concentar Cure, you would expect that the decks that showed up this weekend would reflect where the metagame was at before. The blue card drawers there distorted things for a little while. And the metagame was around very velocity-centric treasure cruise decks or good stuff dig through time decks or combo dig through time decks. And now we should see the metagame revert to what it was, you know, summer of last year. Looks like Force of Wolves are hanging out in the sideboard now for Tickle. I mean, that, that, that does come with some risks. Force of Will is your best protection, obviously, against Glimpse draws and fast natural order draws. Kind of get a better idea of how he wants to sideboard here. If he had a lot of removal and multiple copies of Toxic Deluge, I could see maybe getting away from it. But his list doesn't really have all that much. It's got one copy of Toxic Deluge in the main deck, none on the sideboard. He's thinking about it. Okay, he hasn't reached for those forces yet. The only concern that I have about Force of Will in the matchup from Tickle's side is he just doesn't have that many blue cards. Mm -hmm. And we saw that come up in the, in the first game there. And if he's bringing, you know, if he's setting out, let's say, his two copies of Baleful Strix, I think that's reasonable. I think you could get away from Ancestral Visions a little slow for this kind of matchup. Jace the Mind Sculptor. He starts running really low on blue cards. He's already a little on the light side. And if he's setting out any of his blue cards, he might feel like Force of Will is just not a, a tenable option anymore. Well, it feels like he's gotten away from Visions a little bit, and it appears every single one of the Force of Wills. And if he's expecting Ball to go to discard spells as well, you don't want counter magic then, For, really. Force of Will gets uh, tougher and tougher to uh, be powerful for you. Well, Tickle's happy enough with his setup, so he'll present the deck on over. We'll see how this game does break. Right now, we've got Eric Watkins. Eric, excuse me, Watkins on top of the standings. Eric Hawkins on top of the standings here with Storm. He is 6 and 1 as well as his good friend Matthew. Tom Ross, 6 and 1 here this weekend with Infect. So we're seeing some players that we oftentimes see at the Open Series do well, doing well yet again here. Well, it's a very important tournament for many people. Matthew Tickle, someone who is close to the top of the standings on the leaderboard for a couple months here, has fallen off. Uh, it looked like he was a lock to play in the Players' Championship, or at least very likely. And the last couple of months have not been good to him. Yep. He's slipped in the standings now. He comes in here with only one bye. Looks like Tickle going to take a mulligan. But the quick count, game one, if it, it's three copies of Force of Will. Setting that aside, I'm counting four, five, six, seven, eight, 12, 15 blue cards. It's never that, been, that's not that many for Force of Will. It's never been a very good Force of Will deck. You don't have a lot of blue cards. You kind of want to cast all your blue cards, which is a weird thing to say. So it's never really been a Force of Will deck, in my opinion. You kind of play Force of Will as like a necessary evil to, I guess, make your combo matchup a little bit better. But you've never really had a good combo matchup either. But you don't want to ignore it altogether. Right. Green Sun Zenith here off of Windswept Teeth. That's going to search up for Forest and then a Dryad Arbor. So that'll be boss start yet again. Very familiar with what we saw in the first game. Abrupt decay of the draw here for Tickle. He's got a pivot needle in hand, though. I'm curious to see what he wants to name with that. A lot of targets and elves. Basic Swamp. And now here's the needle. So we'll get confirmation on what that artifact will name here in just a second. I think with a removal heavy hand, Wirewood Symbiote is the most likely card to be named. Okay. Cut off the Elvis Visionary route. Wirewood Symbiote is the name here for Matthew Tickle. I think that Tickle may have his copy of Toxic Delusion in hand, which makes Wirewood Symbiote even a better card to name. Let Ball build up a board, sweep up everything, and not allow Ball to play that 
visionary symbiote game to rebuild. Something that Elves does so well. Dry Darber going to come into the red zone. There's a Bayou pass the turn back. Deathrite Shaman, Verdant Catacombs. Tickle will pass the turn back over to Jacob. Jacob start pretty anemic. Perhaps he's setting up for a glimpse turn. Yep, well, it's going to be Harris Druid. And now Cradle. That'll tap for two, three, four. Natural order. All right, what are we going to dig up? Is it Progenitus time? I, I think it stands to reason he's got a Heritage Druid in play as Liliana the Veil insurance if he's worried about that. Fair enough. This is very, very hard for Charlotte Soltai to beat. Deluge. It'll cost a lot. Not saying it's cheap, yep. but you can get out from under this. If that was Ross Merriam, he would have drawn Progenitus that turn. First card in the opening hand. Yeah. A classic Ross Merriam play. Never seen him actually natural order for Progenitus. Seen him drawn a lot. Yeah. Death Rite Shaman going to remove a land, and now here is Toxic Deluge. It's a painful way to do it, but you look at Ball's hand, not a lot of cards left. Yep. Get the Shuffle Progenitus back in. Maybe it'll come now. Yep. Swim into the top of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Poking its head above water. Trying to see what's going on. I want to play. What'd I miss? <laughs> Time to draw. Metal Sentinel, Glimpse, a couple different cards here in hand for Ball. He'll go with the Metal Sentinel. There's a Dryad Arbor. I think Ball might just have to pass the turn back here. Yep. Over to Tickle we go. I think he may have just drawn a Grafter's Cage. He did. Does he want to play off curve a little bit? Well, the, the issue if he plays off curve is he goes to five from the hit on board, and he just might die before he gets all the stuff out of his hands. Mm -hmm. Got Jace over there, Tarmogoy for Abrupt Decay. Quite a few options, honestly, on what to play. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see him just want to cast a two-mana spell as opposed to a one-mana spell at this point. Because if he could draw a land, then he gets to play something and cast Graphicker's Cage in the same turn. If he plays off-curve this turn, he's probably playing off-curve for numerous turns because his hand's nothing but two-mana spells. Just going to play the cage, though. Wow. Well, I think that, that Tickle might be working from the vantage point of, all right, I, I shut off... Any progenitor shenanigans. After that, I untap and play Tarmogoyf. Ball might not be able to attack. Then the next turn, I can use a removal spell or cast Jace. Here's Visionary. That'll draw two. We're going a little glimpse turn now. Cradle's going to tap for three green. There's Wirewood. That'll draw a card. Keep in mind, Needle's locking that down, though. But this is kind of the board state that, that uh, Tickle was helping to set up. Is hoping that the Tarmogoy be able to attack. Ball might have just put too much on the table for Tarmogoy to be able to stabilize this game, however. That's pretty likely. Yep, can't use that. And it's explained to him that why would somebody else naming Needle is on Needle. There we go. 
So that dry arbor, that dry arbor should still be tapped too. So we'll make sure that does happen. You put the needle on top of the card, boom, problem solved. Sort of. Might not even get to attack now. Might just disappear. Seems like a recipe for it to get shuffled into someone's deck for game three. Yeah, you know. Not saying there's for sure a game three, it's just looking likely. Golgari Charm is the, the draw here. Yes. It'd be a good draw. The draw was not Golgari Charm, unfortunately, for Matthew Tickle. He picked up a copy of Charlotte's Agent. So we'll see what Tickle wants to play this turn. He's got, again, he's got plenty of options. He's just stuck on mana. Had a Toxic Failures away a Progenitus earlier this game. So this is the decision here. He can play Tarmogoyf. Uh, if he plays Tarmogoyf instead of Jace, he's down a loot the next turn. If he casts Jace, Jace cannot block the Nettle Sentinel. Has to block something else. And then Tickle falls to one, and then suddenly fetch lands are off the table, et cetera, et cetera. I think that I prefer the Tarmogoyf as well. Here's Green Sun Zenith. Yeah. Can't search, but he can still cast it. Mm -hmm. Untap the Nile Sentinel. But if all goes to plan here and Tickle blocks the Nile Sentinel and, and goes to two, Golgari Charm is a very live draw. Yes, it is. This one's not over. You know, Charlotte's agent and removal spell is good. Assuming it doesn't have to crack a fetch land. No, you're, oh yeah, because it tickles on two. Yep, yeah. That's still good. Well, he's looking for something. Awkward. Well, fetch land still gives him Golgari Charm. He can still Charlotte's Asian. He can still Charlotte's Asian and Golgari Charm. Yeah, yeah there's still true. an out. Yep. Very good point. There's Bayou. Can he hit the home run is the question. There is a card here that is perfect for Matthew Tickle in this situation. And if he hits, it's going to be really hard for Ball to recover. Yep. It's not just it's stable. It's he's ahead big time. Well, there's the attack. And Tickle is attacking first because he knows his out is just Golgari Charm. And he doesn't want to lose a point off the Tarmogoyf attack. Yep. Spin the wheel. No. No. Ancestral Visions. <laughs> I get to draw three cards and I lose. Usually, it's unfortunate. Usually the one you're most excited about, but Ancestral, no good there. Had to be Golgari Charm. Tickle couldn't find it. Jacob Ball does tie things up against Matthew Tickle. El, Charlotte Saltai getting ready here for game number three. These players going back and forth, duking it out. Got an update for you guys. Tom Ross did win his match. He's 7-1 and one now. He beat Infect last round. Won the mirror. That matchup's got some real back and forth to it. Uh, for a little bit. Yeah, it's not long. <laughs> it's not, not a particularly long match, that's for sure. Tom with a spell sky in the sideboard. Prepared. <laughs> Came ready. Came ready You're for the mirror. totally right. Just how he drew it up. I do worry with the way that Tickle sideboarded that he's just... Very vulnerable to the spells that are in Baugh's deck. Hey, it might does, change things up now. Does not have a lot of ways to fight over Glimpse, Natural Order, and Green Sun Zenith. Just the one copy of Graftigger's Cage, honestly, and I, I, I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, you know, just the forces in the board. I, I don't know if he needs all four or three or whatever, and maybe he just needs two, but I think he should have at least some number in his deck. Yeah. Personal opinion, of course, but... I wouldn't want to just be, I don't like the feeling of just, oh, you drew natural order, there's nothing I can do about that. Because most of, of Tickle's 
forms of interaction here are sorcery speed, and Baugh can kill him from a very low base. It's not like it's a guarantee that Tickle gets to untap and cast Toxic Deluge when Baugh's doing his thing. When Baugh goes off, it can be lethal right there, and leaning too heavily on sorceries to protect yourself in that kind of matchup is very dangerous. I can understand not wanting to have a bunch of Force of Wills. We already mentioned that the blue count on his spells in the deck is pretty low, but I'm not sure you can get away from that card altogether. Well, these players will shuffle up, get ready here for game number three. Looks like there might be some re-sideboarding done by both players. So we're talking next level library here by Patrick Shape and the two very popular books for all skill levels, and they're available now. Yeah, two books, next level deck building with a focus on deck building and next level magic, focusing on playing a better game. Uh, players of all ability levels can learn from these two books, and they're available right now, paperback and ebook over at starcgames.com slash next level. The innovator, the Hall of Famer, Pro Tour champion, two-time world runner-up, Patrick Chapin. We get ready here for game number three between Jacob Baugh and Matthew Tickle. Should have enough time to finish here. You got about 14 minutes up to play here for these two players. They have a little second guessing on how to sideboard for game number three, given what they saw in game number two. If Tickle is going to leave his Force of Wills in the sideboard, or mostly leave it in the sideboard, I would strongly consider bringing in Meddling Mage, because that's also a way to shut down spells that you can't interact with on your own turn. That's true. That, that's, that's a true. way to do it. If he's worried about his blue card count being too low to support a bunch of copies of Force of Will, Meddling Mage can name Natural Order, it can name Glimpse of Nature, and that's a way to work around those cards as well. Gotcha. Interesting matchup here. Yeah, you know, the funny thing about this matchup is like Charlotte Soltai can really bring the heat if they want to in this matchup. Like if they think there's gonna be a lot of elves, cards like Toxic Deluge, Golgari Charm, uh, Engineered Plague, stuff like that, they can really bring it. But it looks like Tickle's kind of hedged and just been a little bit broader across the format. Yeah, Knight of Souls Betrayal is a card we see from time mm -hmm. to time. Very good in this matchup as well. A lot of different ways you can go. Tickle going to be on the player. Take a look at his opening hand. And it looks like Tickle has a hand with Brainstorm and some Abrupt Decays and some lands. And you can see, uh, you know, the look on his face right now, the way that he's shuffling right now, it says it all. This hand is very vulnerable to, even though this is a good-looking hand, it's got Brainstorm, it's got a removal spell, it's got a way to shuffle, this hand just might be too susceptible to Natural Order or a Glimpse for Tickle to keep. Well, he's going to keep it. There's Deathrite Shaman. He brought in Notion Thief. Uh, that's a way to try to do it. Trying to get you. There's a Brainstorm on the unstep. And it looks like Tickle has again found his one copy of Toxic Deluge, which is a huge help. Yep. Now we can let Baugh develop the board a little bit. If, if Baugh has a developmental glimpse turn and puts a bunch of stuff on the table, uh, Tickle at least has an answer to that. One more card going to go back here for Tickle. And then that'll be the card that he draws for the turn. Just wants to make sure he sets up the Brainstorm right. Looks like he might have a fetch land involved here. Notion to get the draw. Now he really wants to get him. Yep. If he's not shuffling that away, he really wants to get him. There's never been more of a I want to get you card. If you want to, play, if you want to pay four mana to counter a glimpse, it's a good way to do it. Yeah. There's Queer and Ranger. See if that resolves. It will. And Bob's just going to hang tight with his Deathrite Shaman. No lands to remove. And moving Brainstorm deals more damage than attacking, so it makes sense. Tickle will, rem will activate his Verdant Catacombs, search up a land here. Gonna go with Underground Sea. Looks like we have an Abrupt Decay on the way. Gonna take care of Death Rite, Shaman. Take care of Brainstorm with the Death Rite. Deal two. 
That'll do it for this turn. Now we're going to head back Tickle's way. Tickle might start going after some mana here. He's got a bunch of wastelands. Yeah, a little wasteland action. And if he, you know, constricts Baugh's mana, he doesn't have to worry that much about a big combo turn. And if all Baugh can do is drop some stuff on the table, Toxic Deluge takes care of that as well. He's going to play Wasteland, but just pass the turn. Inverting Catacombs the land. Ball will sacrifice that. Basic forest, the weapon of choice. Now there's Evolutionary Leap. Well, this is a very powerful plan to try to beat removal. I mean, Tickle can answer this at least via Abrupt Decay. Mm -hmm. But you cannot leave this card unchecked on the table if you're playing some sort of control deck. No, I think you have to kill that. Yep. That's exactly what Tickle's going to do. He's almost, his hand is forced yes. to kill that. Another Wasteland. Three copies in Tickle's list. Typically, you only see two. Interesting. Not firing away yet. Silver Library of the draw. There's Silver Library. And the Ranger making it difficult to activate the Wastelands yeah. in a profitable manner. And Tickle might be just asking for confirmation. Sylvan Library v. Notion Thief. Oof. Sylvan Library among Magic's most poorly templated cards. Yeah, really not good. Oh, great. We can read it right now if we'd like. <laughs> Tickle's going to take a look at the Oracle. I don't even know if it's going to help him. In situations like this, I love to pull the judge aside and I go, hey, does this work with Notion Thief? Well, I believe Sylvan Library does cause you to draw the cards. This is the reason that, uh, for example, it interacts with Brainstorm. You have to call over a judge in some of those spots. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. It's my favorite. Just go, hey, hey man, I know that I just read that card. I don't know how this works. So. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna act like I'm 100% sure this is good for Tickle. I'm like 99% sure this is really good. I'm like right up there with you. But I've, I've messed up cards from Legends before, so let's just see how this shakes out. Ancestral Visions is on suspend. Well, he's not playing Notion Thief. Okay. So it must not work out the way that we want it to. And Ball says, I'm just going to pay eight life. Well, when are you going to cast Notion Thief then? Unless he's really trying to bait him into a big glimpse turn. But, but even then, look, he'll just stop casting right, stuff. He just yeah, stops it's casting. just not going to work. There's Wirewood. Quirin Ranger going to come across for one. Vision's going to go down to three. I guess you can target your opponent with Ancestral Visions when you have Notion Thief. Get it? Sure. Get it. It's the issue that Baugh can announce it as a May, and then that requires the Notion Thief to get played, and then Baugh can choose not to use it. I believe so. I mean, it's just weirder in such a, in such a funky way. Yeah. But my, my, my larger point, as you see, Wastelands are going to go after the lands now, is if, if you have Notion Thief in your deck, you know, when are you going to play it? Well, I think basically. that I, I think Tickle's hope here was kind of what happened which is where Baugh's going to draw some cards, play out a bunch of stuff, then the Deluge answers it. You basically eat eight life out of Baugh, so there's only so many times that he can fire back in with the Sylvan Library drawing a bunch of cards. Okay. Your Ancestral goes off the stack, and you can try to win the game that way. Okay. It's an odd path, though. I mean, Baugh can, 
Vaughn can play this card advantage game. It's not like Tickle has all the sweepers in the world. That Toxic Deluge is it, unless he's able to get to Jace Friend's Prodigy and flash it back. Here's a Brainstorm. Two cards off to go back. You saw Visions tick down to two on the upkeep. Brainstorm done resolving. There's Misty. All right, so here is Notion Thief. So I guess we'll find out for once and for all, right? Yep. How this weird interaction works. I mean, Ball can opt out. I don't think Seven Library is a mandatory. Sure. So you can just say, okay, I'm not using it. Well, enjoy that progenitus for your draw step then. Always. Yeah. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman and Nettle Sentinel. Pass the turn back. Vision's down to one. Here's Tarmogoyf. I think Vendillion Click was the draw. Vendillion Click's pretty good here. Yep. And Tickle's in a, a spot where he wants to race. It's combo with Notion Thief. Boom. Draw step. V click you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you. Uh, what do we want here? Probably Nettle Sentinel. Yeah. Two natural orders, a glimpse of Progenitus, and then two abrupt decays. And dealing click is draw a card. Yep. So Tickle will be drawing. Thanks. Yep. Combo with Spirit of the Labyrinth yep. also. <laughs> yep, very for true. those of you. Look at you, look at you knowing the space. Look at you knowing all of the combos with Vendillion Click. It's probably others I'm not thinking of. Or saving. Saving for yep. a rainy day. Yeah, saving for your next legacy tournament. Visions will resolve now. Three cards coming, plus one from the draw step. There's a Charless Agent. Let's see what this cascades into. Tarmogoyf. Thump. Delta's the land. Needle. Deathrite Shamans are on lock now. Here comes Tarmogoyf. It's a very Charless, soul tie game right now. Pluto Delta going to be sacrificed. And now Abrupt Decay is going to take care of Silver Library. Not sure there's a lot to be gained there, other than growing Tarmogoyf, I that's, guess. That's about it. Library is unlocked because of the, well, one, because of Jacob's life total, and two, because of the Notion Thief. Yeah. And much like the first game that we saw Tickle win, when you're playing against Elves, I think the trick here is to just kind of annihilate their resources. Keep, keep as few on the board as possible, and then they just don't have a lot to work with. The deck does not come back well. Once you hit them with the first they real huge the blow, the, the first removal, the, the first sweeper, the first Jute hit, hit does not come back very easily. You see Boss going to concede the game here because he's got no board. Tickle's worked him down. He's drawn some cards with Ancestral Visions. He's going to get the job done. He'll win this matchup here over Jacob Ball. Two games to one. Charlotte Saltai can move on to seven and one. Elves will fall down to six and two. And we knew coming into this tournament the name players were going to play Charlotte Saltai, and it has not disappointed. It's looked very, very good here this weekend. Yeah.